again. The layoff is over. <sighs> really with the seatbelts? Every time, babe. Every There's got to be a way to turn these stupid things off. It's been a long hiatus, but we have returned. We're coming at it hard. We're coming at it big time. We're coming at it Mike Nichols style. Christians in cars getting in cokes. cokes. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> Side of Mike Nichols' home. Yes. And, and you can hear my dogs going nuts too. So who's the Halloween uh, person? Is it you or is it Ashley? Uh, I mean, I like it, but Ashley loves it. Ashley loves it. Yeah. And it's even more ridiculous for Christmas. So. Awesome. It's like, really cool. For every it. one tote we have of Halloween stuff, we have like three for Christmas. I love so. this. For every tote. Yes. I love this pillow. 
Oh yeah, she's all she's into retro everything. So yeah, that is super cool. Yeah. There's one. Oh my gosh! I love it. If oh, it were up I to me, it. like every wall would be white, the furniture would be black, <laughs> <laughs> nothing would be different. <laughs> so everything you see is ashes. This isn't me. Yeah, this is really, this is next level. You yeah. even had the, I don't know if you, I don't know if, if we got the, the Dorothy, or no, what was that? The Wicked Witch? Yeah. The Wicked Witch. The Wicked Witch. Uh -huh. Why was the Wicked Witch wearing Dorothy's? Didn't she wear purple? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, she wear, I don't yeah. Know. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you said she was dead. That was her sister, the Wicked Witch of the East. This is the Wicked Witch of the West. She's worse than the other one was. Who killed my sister? Who killed the Witch of the East? Was it you? Does she try and tease her wear her shoes? I don't. Does the Wicked Witch wear the groovy slippers? I have no idea. Slippers. Ruby slippers. What have you done with them? Give them back to me or I'll... It's too late. There they are, and there they'll stay. Are you guys ready to do this? Yeah. Okay. Are you nervous? Are you excited? No. Yeah, I'm good. I'm okay, you're good. Bored yet? <laughs> no. No, this is good. All right. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. Can, can I have some candy corns? Help yourselves. Yes. I love them. Blue. I have a few blue ones. Mm, I've never had blue. Yeah, those were, those were for London. <laughs> but you can have them. I'm sure, yeah. We'll bring her some more. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I meant, but that's why, that's why they're different colors. They're like cotton candy flavored or right, something. Right, yeah. Oh, they're bad. These oh, are they good. are. These are good. Blue. Mm. We will ask Ashley where she found them. Yeah. Since we ate them all. <laughs> what are the yellow ones? I think they're lemon. I'm not a big fan, but... I'm not a big fan of lemon. What are the green lemons? I don't know if those are lime or apple. Oh, like shells. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in your pocket. Sorry, London. <laughs> Sorry, London. <laughs> I'm on a diet. This was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. All right. Pretty soon, that's going to be us. The Ruckman Knights <laughs> will be riding soon. Yeah. We might as well get the church. This will be our episode to get the church acclimated to the idea <laughs> that of what their pastor has started um, a biker gang called called the Ruckman Knights. Okay, so. <laughs> And that idea was floated what at eleven o'clock um, on a Tuesday or something. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's what became one of our Bible studies. <laughs> to let you know where our, our, our exegesis goes when we're together, <laughs> we concluded from a passage of scripture that we should start a biker game. <laughs> Once you all get bikes. You're right. Yeah. Gotta get the bike. Well, those are a crucial element of a <laughs> of a biker gang, I suppose. Yes, and knowing how to ride one. Well, that's a big. That comes second only to having one. It is. Because of Ted Peacock, I do own a motorcycle now. That's right. We've, we've been on a long hiatus. Yeah. So we want. Oh, is this the first one? Yeah. Holy yeah. smokes! So we want to come back full caliber, wow. nickel plated. Now yeah. we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you like that? There it yeah. is. Nickel plated. Okay. Yes. We'll do. The other one was nickel for your thoughts. Sure. 
okay, mm -hmm. but if you, what, if yeah, you, nickel plated, I think is where it's at. Okay, okay. Yeah. full caliber nickel plated. Right. So this is it. We're coming at you, <laughs> full caliber nickel plated. <laughs> um, Mike, how in the world um, did you end up at Wildwood Baptist Church? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so we kind of bounced around, me being Ashley and I, and then later on London, of course, between churches around here, all of which being Baptist, um, and eventually eventually just landed at Wildwood because it was the next local one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that, we, that, that, yeah, <laughs> kind of. But also, so, so you were working alphabetically. Yeah, right. And, and, we and got luckily, w. yeah, A through W. They're horrible Baptist churches. A through W. All right, good, good for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You nailed it. No, um, <laughs> but of course she she went to uh, the former TBT back in the day. So she did. She had that connection. I don't know why it took us so long to get over here in the first place, but we did eventually, and feels like it's going to stick anyway as long as nobody gets sick of us or anything so well <laughs> it's the best one so far how's that yeah. i mean how old was ashley when I'll you take came, it. when you came to tbt brett i mean you knew her when she was i don't know six or seven was she that young i knew ashley before that i think i knew ashley yeah so ashley was of course in in my youth department mm-hmm her father uh, was a deacon. Mike was a deacon, great guy, and um, and what? What are you saying? I'm trying to say something good about Leanna. You keep interrupting me. <laughs> Do you not want me to say good things about Leanna? Or it's time to order, isn't it? By the way, we can get food too. No, we, I'm, I'm good. I'm we've good never food. tried food on the show. <laughs> Unless a it's going to be like a, a new season thing. Yeah. But I'm good on food. Um, shake food. Hello, what can I get for you today? Um, we are, uh, oh, hold on one second. Um, we're going to have, what are we going to have? Shake's fine with me. Is okay, what, what, what flavor? Shake? Yes. Okay, Those we'll have, mm -mm. we'll have a, jam uh, what do you want, Kim? Jamocha shake. We'll have two, what? we'll have two Jamocha shakes. What size? Small, well, medium, medium. Snacks? Mediums. Yeah. Anything else? And then do you still have the orange freeze no. thing? Oh wow! You're 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 quick to answer. You don't even get the Sorry. sentence out. No, it's amazing. Sentence? No, we do not. It's the fastest service in town. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm used to getting asked that a lot. Of yeah, money. yeah. Strawberry shake. We don't have strawberry either. Oh my. Okay. We just have chocolate vanilla and chocolate. Okay, I'll have a large chocolate shake. I gotta try the battered fish sandwich. Okay. Okay, thank you. So the shake and the beer battered shake. Uh, beer battered fish? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. 1724. Alright, thanks. No beer battered shake. That would be something. That would be something. That would be something. <laughs> um, so you're at Wildwood. Yep. Your wife has a history. Uh-huh. Uh, with our church. Yes. Not She has a history of, like, abuse or <laughs> being a horrible wife or something like that. That, that came out really that's, strange. That's not the case. Yeah, okay. No. Your wife has a history with the church. She was a kid in our youth department. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike and Leanna were, 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 you know, members of Wildwood for a long time. Um, so, so what, what has your experience at Wildwood been since you've been here? I mean, it's been all positive so far. Um, and I forgot actually, the reason we actually checked it out was because she went to your dad's funeral. Wow, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you were preaching, and she's like, I haven't heard preaching like that in a long time. And she's like, I'm going to go whether you want to go or not. So I was like, well, <laughs> it'd be a bad look for me not to go. No. But I was like, well, that sounds good. So, and actually, <laughs> yes, it was it was ironic because the first Sunday we went, I don't even think you did that much preaching. It was uh, more of like an informative thing about what's been going on, all the missions that are happening. Mm -hmm. And we oh, got, because yeah. you started it out, I think, saying this would be a horrible Sunday f to be like a first time visitor. I'm like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, timing's never really been my thing, but we'll give it a shot. But it was good. It was actually good to get kind of that overview of everything that's 
that was going on. Everything was very clear. There was a good direction. So I thought it was a really good place to start. Um, and then obviously, you know, the services thereafter were, were uh, a lot more normal as far as preaching goes. So, mm. um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's been great. We've been doing that. We both got involved in the Bible studies, which has been super cool. Um, you preached. I did. You preached. Did, yeah. you, did you ever think you'd be preaching? Not a chance. But, um, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of never say never. Um, and that. I've been saying no, and it hasn't even been like a hard no to things that have been brought up. It's just been kind of um, a malaise, I guess, if you will. <laughs> so right. Just kind of like, I don't know, instead of going to church Sunday mornings, we're just hanging out as a family. Um, and it was time to get back into it. And things just keep popping up and just keep saying yes to things. So, um, and it's all been, been super cool and exciting. So, yeah, well, yeah. we started for, for people that are are not knowing what's going on we started a preacher's workshop right training thing for the summer and about eight nine guys or so i don't know uh, joined it yeah right and so we so we did this summer preacher workshop thing and i think you know in a weird way it was one of the most productive i think a good way to learn how to study the bible is actually to yeah. learn how to preach mm-hmm if you learn how to preach correctly. Yeah. You know? Well, there's got to be pressure, right? Right. <laughs> and there's, there's plenty of that. You have to know your stuff before you get up there. And especially me, who before this year is knew, like, probably zero. And so this year I've learned more more than, <laughs> like, uh, the 33 years or 34 years before, prior. So, I mean, yeah, it's been nothing but, nothing but positive and nothing but uh, a learning experience. And so... It was amazing to see, and I'm not just saying this, you know, I'm not just preaching, I'm, I'm, I'm telling the truth, <laughs> ding ding, uh, your sermon was really good. Well, thanks. And it was amazing to see, as you say, a guy go from almost nothing, I remember sort of the look on your face the first, <laughs> <laughs> the first, the first night, and it was like, uh, oh. okay, how did life bring me to this point? I right. This is, this is going to make me sound stupid, but. I didn't think that I'd actually have to, have to, have to preach at a preacher's thing. <laughs> it's a preacher's learning how to preach, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I just thought, yeah, it'll be a good way to learn how to how to study better. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There you go, ma'am. Thank you. I don't think that's a Pardon me? Sauce. What'd you say? Sauce. sauce. No, no, sauce is like. It comes with tartar sauce, right? Mm. I don't think there's any disguising these as Cokes, by the way. <laughs> Not Coke. No, the transparency. <laughs> Killed that old thing. Yeah. Mm, it's good, though. So, uh, I grew up in Temperance, so I've lived here my entire life. Uh, my parents still live here. I have two brothers. I'm in the middle. Uh, my younger brother, Nick, is a couple years younger, and my older brother, Tony, is five years older. So um, we grew up Catholic, went to uh, CCD every Sunday uh, over at St. Pius, and then um, uh, I went to college over at Defiance College. I played football there for four years. My younger brother joined me. We played football for a couple years together, which is kind of cool. Um, and I met Ashley my sophomore year of college. I would come home on the weekends a lot because, uh, as you might imagine, there's not a whole lot going on in Defiance, Ohio <laughs> on the weekends. So uh, I met her through a friend of a friend bowling one night. Um, and then from there she couldn't get rid of me. So, <laughs> so and then we got engaged in 2009. Yeah, uh, January of 09. I graduated in 08, so it was kind of quick. Uh, <laughs> my dad wasn't real thrilled because I didn't have really have a job at that point. <laughs> so he was a little upset. 
uh, and let that be known when we went, went home to tell them uh, that we had just gotten engaged. So, uh, but yeah, we, we got married the next year in 2010, so it'll be 10 years, man, in a couple of weeks, wow. which is crazy. Yeah. Didn't you just tell your dad that John Lennon once wrote, All, All You Need Is Love? Uh, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have cared. <laughs> <laughs> or that was your dad. What about her dad? <laughs> her dad thought it was great. Her parents thought it was awesome. I'm, I'm, picking, I'm, ta I'm picking up that your dad's not the biggest romantic that's ever lived. Well... Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> not externally, anyway. <laughs> yeah, very pragmatic. Um, and my mom, too, a little bit. I mean, she was excited, but it was like, so when are you going to get a job and, like, move out and stuff? <laughs> and that followed shortly, but, yeah, it's, uh, so... So did a job come through? What? How, how did you get... Yeah, so, started? I mean, at that point, I was, I, I had to take an unpaid internship, um over at Aspen Grove in Lamberville mm -hmm. and I was I was hoping if I did a good enough job like they'd be like oh yeah we'll just we'll just hire you find something for you to do that didn't end up happening <laughs> so what I had to do was take a job um, collecting debt over the phone so like credit cards <laughs> rise and bills and that was six months, but it felt like ten years. That was such an awful job. <laughs> it was horrible. I was really bad at it. Because people, it was in the middle of the recession, which is why I was, you know, bouncing around from job to job anyway. It's impossible to find a job. Um, people are, are unemployed, obviously. They're losing their homes. And I'm calling about, like, a $200 Verizon bill that they haven't paid. And they're telling me to get lost. Or, you know, something more colorful than that. But <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I lasted probably six months, I think, uh, before I caught on um, at another job. But, it, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it's been it's been tough sledding um, just career-wise a little bit. But we, fi <laughs> we finally got into a good groove these past couple of years, and then it, it turns out um, the Apple account that I work on is going away at the end of the year so things are kind of in flux again um, but we've been through it before after I got that debt collection job I worked at um, a hospice that used to be in Lambertville the same people owned it from Massive Grove so that's how I got that and then two months before we're we're gonna have our wedding I get fired <laughs> so it's oh, like, no. oh. we had just bought a house you know six months before we're going to get married in October. I get fired in August. Um, but it's all worked out. It always does. I always, somehow, I always end up on the right side of things eventually. I'm not really sure how that works out, but it does. Um, but it is, I mean, it is, it is a little stressful because, well, and, and here's some here's some breaking news. It'll be a good one for the first episode is... Well, we're gonna have another mouth to feed in, uh, oh. in like late May or early June. Oh so. my goodness! Wow. Yeah. So that is a huge surprise. <laughs> this is. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is how you get the news out. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Congrats. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, giant surprise for us. We had to do fertility for London, mm -hmm. and then six years of nothing, and then all of a sudden, and she knew right away. <laughs> wow. Ashley always says, like, it's a shame people are going to think that 2020 has been one of the worst years, but for us it's been one of the best, so. Hmm. Yeah. I've never done this before, and now I'm realizing why. <laughs> He's going to need a lot of editing. Uh, it's, real, it's really good. You have enough. Now, does, is, does London know the news? Oh, yeah. Okay. She's very excited. Is she wishing for a brother or sister? <laughs> She told us she's hoping for a brother so she doesn't have to share her stuff. <laughs> that's, so, was London that's so good. excited that she almost wet her plants? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spring is here. I'm so excited. I wet my plants. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can say that. Yeah, <laughs> I remember her doing that joke. Yeah. Um, that was awesome. That was a good one. Here we are at Grogan's Town Field. At Bedford Community Stadium. Mm -hmm. These are your. This is your field of glory. Some would say, sure. So tell us now. The the interesting component. Mm -hmm. So, you grew up 
Italian Polish with football coach dad. Yeah. I'm thinking that tough had to be a requirement at an early age. Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much, especially with two brothers. So, right. <laughs> yeah, we never had a chance to uh, to not do anything and and not be tough about it. So, and actually, my mom got involved in that too. Um, this I played basketball too, and I remember very clearly I played varsity as a sophomore just kind of got thrown in mm. and I was doing well like the f the first mm, few weeks and then all of a sudden it was like I forgot how to play basketball <laughs> and then the coach like quit playing me and I don't I don't blame him at all like mm. I don't know what happened and I get in the car looking for like some kind of encouragement after a game and they're, they just both looked at me like you suck tonight. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> like seriously, that was embarrassing to watch. <laughs> like, wow. Well. So yeah, they're like, you stop playing hard. I don't know why you're doing the things you're doing. I'm like, me neither. You played college football. Yeah. So I'm assuming you were better at football than basketball. Um. Yeah. Yep. A little bit. I started playing when I was nine. Um like organized we would play football i'd play football with my older brother in the backyard we had like a huge backyard growing up and all the neighborhood kids would come and play um played at northwood um which is the name of the elementary school at that time in toledo um and then shoreland the next year and then started playing junior high over here so yeah it was uh it was a lot of football <laughs> a lot of a lot of basketball so those were those were what were taking up the majority of my time um, between elementary school, junior high, and then high school. Hmm. It's it, Sports is a strange thing, and if you've played team sports especially for a mm -hmm. long time, I think saved or unsaved, I think God uses it in your life. He does something with that. It's too, and this is going to sound a little cheesy, but it's too spiritual of a thing. To, to totally submit to another man who you know who screams oh, yeah. at you and yells mm -hmm. at you, yep. to <clears throat> push your body to do things that <clears throat> you don't think that it can do or that it certainly doesn't want to do, yep. and to be able to to actually go through humiliation and go through victory and struggle with a team of other people in an intimate setting, it's almost more of a spiritual thing than it is a physical thing. Yeah. You know, I wasn't a very godly kid. As a matter of fact, I didn't even get saved until I was a senior in college. Mm -hmm. So the only ethics that really got drilled into me, I learned playing sports, getting up early. Yep. And I mean, it's a, different, it's a different way to do it. Yep. But it certainly instills a lot of good things into somebody. Sure. But if you're the best player on a team, then your teammates are going to look up to you. It's just a natural thing. And so that was weird for me because they would make me captain. And I was like, well, all right, I guess it makes sense. And then, like, I wouldn't, like, say anything to anybody. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure it came off really strange. Um, but it was, it was, I was like, well, I'll just lead by example and it'll be good enough. Well, it's not. You mm -hmm. have to be vocal at some point. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to necessarily be yelling at people and be, um, you know, super loud or anything. You can just be yourself, but you need to actually say something. That was that was a big thing to go along with sports. Is like, you know, you have to take what the coach is doing. He's not going to be able to see everybody all at once, and it's up to you as a captain to like, right. you know, see things that can be improved and going up to people and, and just challenging them or right. having people challenge you, saying, you know, you're a captain and you need to do, you need to start doing things better, whether it's practicing better doing things you know in class better or whatever it is you know stop being an idiot <laughs> which yeah, right <laughs> people are looking up to you kind of thing so um and that you know has a lot of different applications leading a family um in a career yeah. just in everyday life so well church work yeah I mean, what a great way to yeah. prepare even though you might not even see it coming i'm sure you never thought this is going to make me an awesome church member someday. <laughs> I, I can tell you it never crossed I, my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be willing to bet that's not what was your, you know, that wasn't your perspective in the moment. Nope, not even close. But, I mean, everything you're describing, I mean, 
it's discipleship. The word discipleship mm-hmm. comes from the word discipline. And and you've got to have you've got to have vocal leadership and you've got to have people that can actually perform well. You know, God it God took some very eclectic circumstances in your life and you know wove them together. I think I think that's part of the reason that you you join a a preaching workshop not thinking oh, you're right. gonna have to preach. <laughs> okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna go there anymore. I'm just I just let that one slide. Okay. No, it's we, fair. We moved on. Uh, but then you did it and you did it well. Hmm. Well, that reminds me too. <clears throat> we used to practice back here, um, behind the stadium and stuff. And before my sophomore year they had me running with the varsity a little bit, just kind of in I don't, it wasn't even conditioning. I don't, I don't even remember what it was. We didn't even really have pads on. So it was more or less walkthroughs. Um, you get the defense set up, whatever, against different alignments. So I was playing middle linebacker, and traditionally that's that's the guy who calls the huddle, calls the defense, you know, ready break or whatever. That's basically the quarterback of the defense. So I run in there with a bunch of seniors, and, like, I know these guys, and they're like, oh, man. So I, like, call <laughs> it really quiet, and, all right, ready break. And I read nobody went anywhere i'm like um what's what's happening and i got the same talk like listen man if you're going to be in here and you're going to be calling a defense for varsity you have to sound like a fan <laughs> like oh all right well let's try this again i <laughs> never made that mistake again <laughs> right yeah well there's there's humility yeah and then there's lack of confidence mm-hmm it's not the same thing, and I think people in church, they come to church thinking, I'm so humble. If you're so humble that you're not discharging your responsibilities correctly, that's not humility. That's actually pride. It's just turned inside out. Yeah. You don't want to be socially un- Like People will say all the time, well, I have a hard time meeting people. Okay, I, have a, I'm, I don't have an outgoing personality. Okay, so here's what they mean when they say that in church. I want to talk to whoever I feel like talking to, and I don't want to be held accountable oh, I, for it. I get that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think phalanx has helped people do that, too, because you, you realize, you, you know, you just show somebody, you know, to you, you become, just be their friend and show show them friendliness and kindness, and yep. it's surprisingly, they're very receptive, and um, I think that's really helped people break out of their shell and kind of see, oh, you know. The, the, the world doesn't end. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Well, so now there's one thing that you have to do. That oh, right. We didn't, I don't think we warned you about. Yeah, so, I didn't grow up. I know, you probably, you didn't grow I don't, up knowing songs. No. Sunday school songs. You, you're going to learn a Sunday school song? <laughs> you ready? All right. Oh. All right, here we go. I, oh I can tell. I can <laughs> tell this is the part that you're like. <laughs> I, for, I forgot about it. I was supposed to tell you, like, I don't know anything. <coughs> okay, so, okay, Kim. I'm also, like, Thanks the worst beers. singer ever. So. Oh, so am I. This is, this is just ridiculous. Yeah, this, this is going to be, 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 be great, yeah. <laughs> fountain flowing deep and wide deep and wide deep and wide there's a fountain flowing deep and wide wide and deep wide and deep there's a fountain flowing wide and deep wide and deep Wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. 
Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. I think we nailed it. There you go. Boom. You now know Sunday school. You yes. know some Sunday school I know songs. two now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's two more that I've ever known. I, I will be willing to bet you London will love those songs. Oh, yeah. I'll course. be willing to bet you she, she knows, knows them. them. Yeah, yeah, she knows them. She knows them. Yeah. You're you're the only schlub in your family that doesn't know Sunday school songs. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> I know London's like, what, what do you mean you don't know? Like, Listen, you're getting a completely different childhood. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was yeah. that yeah. was as yeah. promised, full caliber. Yeah, that's right. Nickel plated. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What I mean? There is that issue. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, there will be a few people who will watch Christians in Cars getting coats, and they will silently think that that the Nichols celebrate Satan's birthday. Oh, uh. but but I don't think they'll be wild. I don't think they'll be wild with people. Now, see, this is what I was trying to tell you. My mom used to have a printer's drawer. Yeah. So did my mom. I love those. These are printer's drawers, and then I wanted you to start like doing that. Yeah, Kim, get on. Why can't you I be cool it. like Ashley? I know, I don't die. <laughs> well, ours is a little full, so we're going to need another one. Yeah. No, but we got these, we got this at the antique mall, and then I just started filling it. And look, I got this, like... Is that a donut? Well, in the... There's a pog in, in the too. dollhouse what? section at Hobby Lobby. Oh. And look at this. This one's for all the people that think I worship Satan because of Halloween. It's the, the Holy it's Bible. The Bible. The smallest <laughs> Bible you'll ever see. It's, it doesn't it, open. It just happens oh. to be next to like. I yeah. swear <laughs> that they do not <laughs> worship Satan. Is there anything else? Is there a word in here? Oh. No, I was gonna say it just it happens to be it. next to like Macho Man Radio. Oh, here's a here's a wise man. Why do you have Joel Osteen on there? <laughs> oh, that's Jerry Seinfeld. Okay, my bad. I'm trying to find yeah. baby Jesus. Who no, he's in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> baby Jesus. Oh, this is another wise man. Oh, yeah. Oh, here he is. Let's just like him, right? No. <laughs> yes, exactly. And look, at right next to it, it says, believe. <laughs> no, believe. Yeah. All right. Uh, with Santa just right above him. <laughs> well, so Mike now knows two Sunday school songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was so worried about that. And, yeah. and, and the motions. Was she was like, worried about the whole thing, to be honest. Yeah. I was like, he grew up in CCD. He doesn't know, like, the B-I-B-L-E. No. no. He now knows Jesus and why. That's a good one. Yeah. That's one of my and favorites. And he knows Jesus loves me with the, with, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, you taught him that. Yeah. <laughs> so now you can all sing. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Dap it up. Ashley. Give me a hug. It looks good for it looks good for television. It was hoping I could. What is this? And congratulations, by the way. Oh, yes. Someone. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank that is you. awesome. <laughs> Open that though, because those truffles are gorgeous. I know you guys are eating. Right? I nailed I nailed London's candy corn. Like it's oh, just it's I went through So it. did Leah Dudley, actually. I had to refill yeah, it because Leah of Leah Dudley. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Wow. Are they pretty? Oh, scary. They are. They don't come with a map, so you're just gonna yeah, have to guess. Like, oh, they None of them have coconut in them because I don't like coconut, so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you didn't just eat half first? You just went in. Yeah. I did see a cocoa Bennett, pebble donut in Frankenmuth. And I was like, I should get that for mm. bread, but I was scared it wasn't going to keep.
Where secrets lie in the border fires and the humming wires. Yeah, man, you know you're never coming back. Across the square, across the bridge, across the mills, past the stack. On a gathering storm comes a tall, handsome man in a dusty black coat with a red right hand. <laughs> <laughs> 